Hey everybody, it's me, Seth, an educator from Silverwood, and it's time for another Eco Art for Kids. Come on, let's go to Silverwood. Wow, it's getting really nice here. And the trees are starting to get leaves, and what? There's a bunch of things flying around them. Birds. There's a lot of bird action at the park. And I know that Bailey is able to lead us today on a really cool bird hike. So let's go meet her on the trail and see what we can find while we're out birding today. Good morning. Um, welcome back to Silverwood Park. My name is Bailey and I'm an interpretive naturalist here at the park. Um, and I wanted to share with you some of the birds that I'm seeing and hearing all around us today. Um, there's some really beautiful calls out there and we're getting into spring and so we're seeing lots and lots of migrants come on back. And so I wanted to share with you some of those discoveries today. Come join me. All right, let's just take a minute and listen to the chorus of things happening around us right now. Could you hear some of those birds out there? Could you tell what some of them are? Um, there's quite a bit of different course of sounds going on right now. And we're gonna see if we can't focus on just a couple of them um, this morning. And we'll take a look and see if we can't figure out maybe what some of them are and maybe some of those ones that are coming back. All right, so we honed in on a bird and it's in those little trees right there. It's not, I'm trying not to get too close so that I don't scare it away. Did you hear that call? That was from the bird. This bird is black with a small orange and red shoulder patch. Do you have any idea what this bird might be? Oh, it was a red-winged blackbird. Those birds come back this time of year and a really good sign that spring is on its way. They're usually calling to let us know that they're making their new territory. So a really amazing bird to see, really kind of special for this time of year in spring. So a great find. So one other tool I wanted to mention while we're thinking about birds and looking for birds are binoculars. Now um, binoculars help us see things that are farther away. So these are my binoculars and you can see there are eyepieces here that pop up and then they actually do move to adjust for my eyes. And then I can also use this dial on the top that allows things to be more in focus. So these are sometimes a really cool tool to use when you're looking for birds. It takes a while to get used to looking through a pair of binoculars, but they can be a really great tool in seeing something that's really far away. Always remember too, if you have a pair of binoculars to usually use the strap around your neck because that will help your binoculars from falling when you are over water or in an area that might be kind of a rocky terrain. So just something to keep in mind. But these are a cool tool if you have these. You can try these out and take a look at the birds around you. Bodies of water are great places to be able to find birds out in the wild. Um, they tend to find their way to water, especially if they're waterfowl or things like ducks or geese. Um, they tend to find their way towards the water because um, that is where their food source is. So we'll check out and explore this water as we hike, but there might be some birds to see near here. So what we found here, can you see that little kind of white blob there? It's um, kind of weaved. It's got pretty cool architecture. Um, and then on the very top, if I go all the way up, it actually has a hole in it. So this is actually a type of nest. It's a hanging nest. And these are typically made by some a bird called the Baltimore Oriole or the Northern Oriole. 
So even if you don't see birds around, you might see signs that they've been in places. So kind of an amazing discovery, pretty neat to see. Um, so let's keep on going. I'm seeing another bird here. So this bird looks like it has a red rust colored tummy and then it has kind of a gray back. It has a black head and it's surrounded by a white kind of outline of their eye. Now this bird is on the ground, which you don't always see, but it looks like it's picking something off of the ground. Do you know what kind of bird this is? This is an American Robin. So this is kind of a special bird. Um, sometimes we do see these birds in winter in Minnesota. It's pretty rare, um, but we see a lot more of them in the springtime. Um, they spend a lot of time on the ground picking insects and worms up off out of the dirt. So kind of a neat bird to see, a really pretty call. Um, this one is not calling right now, but definitely something to look up later. So what a cool find really really cool bird so one of the birds you can see down by the water are other shorebirds um, not just ducks this is actually a bird that is kind of a larger bird it's pretty special um, this bird if you notice has a pretty sharp pointed bill um, that bill is great for catching little fish out of the water it's also really good for um, catching things like frogs so that bill is a really really good for um, catching all sorts of an other animals that live in the water um, these birds are waders so they will stay by the edge of the shore and watch the water for something moving so that they can see if they can grab something to eat um, they have a really distinctive feather pattern, um, so they have pretty um, elongate feathers on the back of their head. Oh, did you see that? It opened its mouth! Um, and then it also has some of those elongate feathers on the back. It's got a curved neck, um, so you can see that curved neck that it's displaying right there. It's a pretty large bird, a great blue heron, but a really amazing bird to get to see. We'll watch it for just a little bit longer. All right, so we will let this heron be and move on to our next bird. Just a really cool bird to get to see on our bird hike today. Another great place to see birds is at a bird feeder. Um, so you can set one of these up in your yard. Um, black oil, sunflower seeds are what I use in my bird feeder um, and thistle. And so that attracts quite a few birds. So we'll take a look at that now. So I took this video a few weeks ago when there was still snow on the ground. Um, and what you're seeing in this video is on the left-hand side, there is a American Cardinal in the triangle feeder that is filled with black oil sunflower seeds. Now you might not picture this as what American Cardinal looks like, but this is actually the female. Um, and the male is a bright red bird. So sometimes in birds, the males and the females look different. Sometimes they look the same. On the right side, you are seeing the thistle feeder. Um, this is a small feeder made for smaller birds. And on that feeder, we are seeing an American goldfinch. Um, so this is a really brightly colored um, yellow bird with kind of a black head. They're really kind of cool. So these feeders are great ways to attract birds um, and all sorts of different kinds of birds at different times of year. So they are a useful tool when you are just starting to get to go birding. Thank you so much for taking the time to explore birding with me today. And I hope you get out and get to see some of the birds that live around you. Um, they're really amazing creatures and spring is a great time to be able to see them. All right, back to you, Seth. Wow. There's a lot to learn about birds. I'm really glad that we could learn about birds with Bailey, and now we can use some of what we learned to make our art project, a bird puppet. It might look something like this. Wow. This is my rose-breasted grosbeak puppet. As you can see, I thought about the overall shape and then the colors and patterns of the bird when I made it. 
And this art project also has a mechanism that allows me to flap the wings of the puppet up and down. Kind of fun. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, bird. In order to make this project, you'll need a few materials. So first up, you'll want a blank sheet of paper. This is a piece of cardstock, so it's a little bit heavier than regular paper, and that will actually make it easier for you to create this puppet. Now, if you'd prefer to not draw your own bird, I also did create a template that you can download so that you can just cut it out and color it. But I think it's a good idea to try to draw the bird that you want to draw. As a reference, I have a book, this is Birds of Minnesota, that happens to have a bunch of different pictures of birds. Now, if you happen to have a picture of a bird that you want to try to create, you can use that as a reference as well. You'll want a pencil so that you can draw the shape of your bird, a scissors to cut out your bird once you've drawn it, crayons, this is my big container, that way you can color and add the patterns that your bird happens to have. And to make the mechanism for your puppet, you're going to want a long, thin stick. This is a barbecue skewer with the end cut off so that it's not pointy. And a straw. Now it's important that this long stick can actually fit into the straw like that so that we can make the mechanism. In addition to this long stick, you'll also want two shorter sticks. So I have these two popsicle sticks that are shorter than the barbecue skewer. Now if you don't have another kind of stick, you could also take another barbecue skewer and just cut it in half. That will work just as well. And finally, you'll want some clear tape so that you can tape the mechanism together in order to make your puppet. All right, let's start making. I have my sample image right here. I'm going to try to make a male northern cardinal. So I'm going to put this right over here for my reference. I have my piece of paper and my pencil. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the overall shape of the body of the cardinal. So you can see it kind of has this triangle that's like the head. So I'm going to draw my body on this upper half of my piece of paper. So above the line that I just drew. So I'm going to draw kind of like a big triangle. And here's the great thing about drawing with a pencil is that it's okay if I don't want all of that line. I can actually get rid of it later or I can just color over the top of it. So I have that big triangle there. I'll probably have my beak end somewhere there. And it looks like there's a little black eye. So I'm going to draw that eye. And it looks like there's a triangle-shaped black mark right there, too. So I'm going to color most of this in black. But just to make sure that I understand where the eye is, I'm going to give it a little space. So there it is, that part. And I see that the triangle kind of comes back in. So I might actually extend this and then have it come in. And then it looks like the body kind of gets more oval-shaped. So I might have this oval shape right in there, something like that. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, the tail looks like it gets thinner. So maybe uh, it looks like it kind of has like a big kind of another half of an oval shape, but it's thinner than the original body oval. So maybe it looks something like that. So. And remember, I'm just thinking about the body shape now. I'm going to think about the wings in a second. So I think if I connect all of these pieces, that looks about like what I want the body of my cardinal to look like. Now, down here, I'm going to draw the wings of my cardinal. And to do this, I'm going to do a little trick. I'm actually going to cut the top half of this paper out. And then because I want two wings that are the same shape, I'm going to fold this piece of paper in half. And I'm just going to draw one wing so that when I cut it out, it's going to make a copy and make two wings for me. And what I'm noticing about these wings is that maybe there's a little bit of darker color on the tip. So I might just have a little bit of a dark color there on the tip when I think about coloring it. But again, I'm just thinking about the shape and I'm kind of seeing 
I'm just going to simplify the shape a little bit to look like this. And it looks like there's a little piece that comes out on one side, so maybe it looks like that. So there's a half of an oval and then another little half of an oval there to make that little wing extension piece. And then I'll add the color to it when I color later. And now we can go ahead and cut everything out. Now that everything's cut out, I want to think about the colors and patterns on this cardinal. Now I see that most of the body of the cardinal is red, and the beak is orange, and then there's a couple of spots where there might be just a tinge of black. So I've set aside those three colors of crayon so that I can go ahead and start coloring my bird. Now, I like to be careful and protect the surface that I'm working on, so I'm going to put another piece of paper down that I can color over the top of. This is just a scrapped piece of paper. So I'll start off, and this uh, beak right here we know is going to be a little bit more orange, so I'm going to color it orange. And I want to try to color it in the same area on both sides, because when you see the puppet, you can see it on both sides. Sometimes it can be helpful to use a window so that you can match up the colors on both sides, but I'm just going to estimate as I color this. So I'll go ahead and just finish coloring up, thinking about the colors that are in my research photo and the ones that I actually want to put on my art project. Now that I have everything colored for my bird puppet, it's time to attach the wings to the body. So we don't need our crayons anymore, we just need some tape. To start with, we'll want to orient our wings on the body, kind of like how we want them, and I'm going to tape both sides of the wings. What I mean by that is I'm going to take a piece of clear tape and I'm going to take the wing to the body and firmly push it down. Then I'm going to tape this side to the body as well. Now what this has done is made a joint so that the wing can actually move up and down so that that flapping motion is possible. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side, lining up that wing. Okay, on both sides. Oops. I just noticed that I didn't get that crayon mark around there with the black. I'm just going to quickly do that. All right, so now I have my bird puppet and I can flap the wings. Now it's going to be time to make the mechanism for my cardinal to be able to fly. To make the mechanism, you'll want the straw and the stick that fits inside of it and the two popsicle sticks. And then you'll also need a scissors and the tape. So we're going to start off here. I'll move this scratch paper out of the way. 
We're going to cut a small piece of the straw. We don't need this full straw, we just need a small piece. So we're going to cut a little piece of it out. And that is going to be able to fit into this stick so that it can go up and down. All right, this part is a trick to make the mechanism really easy to make. Now watch really carefully. You'll want to take a piece of tape that's relatively long, and you're gonna tape the edge of your short sticks so that it can double back and do you see how some of it is hanging over the edge of that popsicle stick? That's important. That's actually going to make the joint where we attach it to the straw and to the bird. So we want this piece to be hanging over. So one more time, I'm gonna show you. You want a long piece of tape and the stick. I'm gonna put it on the edge there. And you want the piece to be hanging over like that. All right, now let's do the other popsicle stick. So next, you're going to want to tape the tape, not the stick, but the tape, to your straw, okay? Now this is what's important, is that it should be able to move like this once it's all taped together. Next, now that we have this straw mechanism complete, we're going to take this long thin stick. We're actually going to tape it. It needs to go underneath the wings. So it needs to be beneath the wings so that this mechanism can work properly. You're going to want to tape it securely under the wings. And if you need multiple pieces, don't be shy. Something that's helpful is to take your fingers and push the tape down in towards that stick to make sure you have a firm hold on it. We're getting close. Our cardinal puppet is almost done. Now we're going to take this straw and stick mechanism and stick the straw into that thin stick. And just like before, when we taped the tape, not the stick, we're going to tape the tape from this popsicle stick onto that wing. So don't tape the stick, but tape the tape onto the wing. That will create a joint so that the mechanism can work. So I'm gonna tape the tape. And I want to notice where on the wing I taped it, and I want to put it in about the same spot on the other wing. So I'm going to tape the tape, not the stick, one more time on this side. And there it is. Our cardinal. It flew away.
had a lot of fun making these bird puppets with you today. I hope that you get to make your own bird puppet and that you can go to Silverwood and Bird or go outside and find some birds around your house.